What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. You know who it is by now? So ladies and gents, I have decided to take another look at Springens. Now previously when I did the Springens deck profile, I kind of mixed it with a few Dogmaticas and Fallen of Albaz. I've totally ripped up that deck profile and I've gone with a different bit of a take on the deck because with the release of some of the extra cards that we've got in the most recent sets, it has become a lot more consistent, meaning we can take some of those cards out and run a more of a pure build. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the profile. So ladies and gents, I'm not going to go over every single card, but I am going to talk about my ratios and some of my card choices. So we've got Triple Springens Rocky. Now the reason I've maxed out on Rocky is because he can retrieve your um, field spell out of the graveyard on normal or special summon, which is super useful. You do need the field spell to be able to allow this deck to function and Rocky basically allows that consistency. Now if you didn't know, all the Springens XYZ monsters have the ability to attach themselves to a Springen monster um, from graveyard or hand, uh, and I believe on face off on field as well, so it's super useful. Gives your Springens XYZ monsters a lot more options and a lot more firepower to per se. So Triple Springens Rocky. I'm also running two pedal. This is probably the least um, impactful card, to be honest. You need graveyard setup to be able to use him effectively, um, apart from attaching him to an XYZ monster. So I've only gone for the double pedal. Next, we have the newest release, which is Springens Brothers. Now, this card is just, I find it super useful, mainly because it has a little bit of um, recursion. So what it allows you to do is special summon a uh, Spriggan's monster from your graveyard if this card is sent from either the hand or main deck to the graveyard, which allows you to kind of get so far without actually using your normal summon. Um, and if you've got graveyard set up, which you should do, hence why I'm playing him at two, it allows for um, some more consistent plays basically. So uh, double Spriggan's brother. Next up for our consistency, we've got Double Springens Branga. Now I have got a couple of cards that allow to recur him out of the Banish pile, because typically you banish these cards and another Springens monster to be able to search for another card. Um, so I've decided to just play, play him at two, mainly because I'm not playing trading. You can play trading in this deck, ladies and gents. However, I'm not playing it. I do have the option to use it, so you could actually max out on himself and the next card, which I'm about to show you, to be able to get the most benefit out of trading. But I've just gone for the two Branga. We're also running a double Captain Saga. He is a quick play pop if you control an XYZ monster by detaching a material from an XYZ monster and targeting an opponent's monster. Um, he's 2800 defense, so he is rather big. You can actually special summon him off um, your Springer's brothers, let him hit the field, and he can literally just sit there as a bit of a wall, to be honest. So, um, super useful card. He's not much of a brick as you would think, especially with some of the other cards that we've got in the deck. And for our honorary Springens monster, we have one Supreme Sovereign Serpent of Golgonda, which is a hell of a mouthful. Yes, it is indeed, but I really do like this card. So what this card allows you to do, special summon itself either from the hand or from the graveyard if you control a field spell. It's a little bit like Doom King Bailadrock. Also, if you do have Gold Golgonda, um, the field spell, it gains 3000 attack and it can also protect your field spell by banishing a monster from the graveyard. So all around a great card. It can actually close out a few games if your opponent's not aware of its position, um, especially if it's in the graveyard amongst a bunch of other Spriggan's monsters. So definitely a power card. You can actually hard make um, rank eights with this card, which is super useful. It is searchable with one of the cards that we've got in the extra deck, hence why I'm only playing it at one. So one of those next for a bit of an honorary engine we're running the machina so we've got two fortress and one citadel um citadel just for the easy fields um filled regeki basically and the machina just for a targeting protection and it's just a bit of a disruption to be honest if your opponent decides to get rid of this card and um, it can rip a card at your opponent's hand as well as just look at your opponent's hand which is very very understated and it's so easy to get him on board especially with the way that springens work if you've got a setup on field already you can pitch any card from your great your hand to the graveyard um it could even plus up brothers so it's just an all-round um very nice little engine that we've got running here with the machinas 
Now, what I will say, ladies and gents, now this is more or less a fun deck profile. You can make this a lot more competitive by putting in a few other cards. It is a bit of a glass cannon deck and it doesn't do much in the way of putting up a big board presence. However, you can take it out with more hand traps, for example. You could potentially take out the Machina package um, and just put in more hand traps. But I've only gone for these guys here. So I'm running Triple Ghost Belt, um, Ghost Belt and Haunted Mansion, which is seen a lot more uh, play recently, mainly because of the resurgence of Sky Striker. So I've gone with the Triple Ghost Belt. I've also gone with the Cyframe package, which is uh, three Gamma and one Driver, uh, mainly because you do a lot of searching uh, or sending to the graveyard. So the chances are before you get monsters on field, um, you're probably gonna run into an Ash Blossom by any chance, especially if you're gonna use Branga to search or you're gonna use your um, Spriggan's Watch to search. So Gamma is just a nice bit of protection. It also can rip a card with Cyframe um, Lord Omega, which is uh, another useful thing right there. Next, we are on to the spells. Now, this deck does not work without this bad boy right here. Great Sea Gold Gold Gunda. Fantastic Field Spell uh, summons a Springens XYZ monster by pitching a Springens uh, monster from your deck, sorry, from your hand to the graveyard. Um, can prevent your opponent from attacking once. It's just all round great and it works well with the Supreme Serpent. Next, another consistency card which allows you to get into your Golgonda. If you don't have Golgonda in your field spell zone, you can actually search it with this card. If you do have Golgonda in your field spell zone, you can add a Springen's monster from your deck to your hand as well as Foolish Burial, a Springen's monster, which is just a super powerful card, might I add. If this was in any other archetype, this card would potentially be broken, um, but it's a little bit more balanced than Springen's, which is why I've decided to max out on this card because it's just super consistency. Next up, we have got another way to get into our field spell, which is Springen's Booty. So, uh, Booty allows you to uh, basically uh, send this from face up from the field to the graveyard to activate your, your field spell directly from your deck. So, you can basically dodge Ash, Ash Blossom um, because you're actually activating, you're not special summoning. Um, and you can also target effect to monster your opponent controls, and you can't act that player can't activate its effects which is just another useful thing just having this face up on the field um, so yeah I've decided to max out on booty so you've got nine ways to get into your field spell ladies and gents you do not need terraforming for that reason next up for some of the other spells that we're running we've got double XYZ import this is just a nice bit of disruption like I said the Spriggan's um, cards don't put up the most amount of interruptions on your opponent's turn so you have to kind of take it out with um, other options and XYZ import is just a nice option and for the one offs we've got one Foolish Burial, one Monster Riborno, one Raigeki for a nice field wipe, nothing needs to be said about those. We've also got one Pot of Acquisitiveness and one Machina Redeployment just to search out our Machina package. We've also got a Pot of Acquisitiveness just to be able to um, recycle some of our Banished Machine Monsters. Typically it's going to be your Branger and another Spriggan's card um, as well as being able to draw one. So very, very useful card. It's a quick play spell which I just, I, I still don't understand why it's like that to be honest but hey ho, it is what it is. Next, we are onto the traps, and we are playing one Springen's Blast, and we are playing one Springen's Call. Blast is a non-targeting, because it targets a zone, um, effect negation, which is just, it's absolutely crazy. It can also prevent your opponent from actually using that zone, so if you get the timing right, you can actually stop Guard Dragon plays for Dragon Link, which is just super useful, because you can stop the zone that they summon to, um, which is nice. Springer's Call is basically a um, Call of the Haunted um, with no drawbacks and you can also banish this card from the graveyard um, if you control Springer's XYZ monster and attach a, a fusion monster that lists fall, Fallen of Albaz to it so that very rarely comes up. It's more so just for the um, monster reborn effect why I'm playing it at one. You can actually search it as well. I'm also playing Double Machina Overdrive. Again, this just puts back your machine monsters and then it enables you to draw. It's basically part of acquisitiveness for um, machine monsters. You can also attribute a, a monster and special summon a Machina monster from your deck, which is useful in itself. So it allows you to tutor out your fortress as well as get your, um, your Citadel in play as well, because you can summon Citadel straight from the um, deck, so yeah. Next, we are on to the uh, extra deck, and we are running Double Springen's Merrymaker. 
this is just some much needed consistency. On special summon, you can foolish burial a spring of monster, um, which is super useful. It can bounce itself to the banished pile until the end of your opponent's turn on your opponent's turn. And also if it bounces itself while it has two materials, you can actually foolish burial a um, fusion monster that lists um, Fallen of Albaz as its material so it's typically going to dump your Sprint Iron Dash Dragon which I'll show you in a moment um, very very nice it actually combos pretty well with um, Draw Driver Vespinato because once you've actually resolved that effect and you make it to your second turn you can actually summon this straight over your um, Springer's Merrymaker to get your Springer's um, XYZ monster off field to be able to go into another one via your Great Sea Go Go Ganda so um, Drill Driver, very useful. You can also special summon a Springer's monster from your graveyard upon destruction, so it's a nice little tech in this deck. We are also running one King of the Feral Imps. Yes, ladies and gents, we are playing Reptiles. This allows you to search out your Supreme Sovereign Serpent of the um, Golgonda um, and allows you to basically just get it into hand and a special summon it. Allows you to push for some big damage because he's 23, your Supreme Serpent is going to be 3000 if you've got the field spell, which you should do if you're playing the deck correctly. Um, so, yeah. Next up, we're playing our Explorer. This is your main fusion monster. You can detach materials and just pop cards on the field with the target zone and then pop cards adjacent to that zone equal to the number of XYZ materials you detach. So it's kind of like a cross. Um, you can pop up to like three or four cards if you, if you manage to do this correctly, um, which is super useful. So you do want to hard make one of these just so you've got one in rotation because if you didn't know, ladies and gents, if you special summon a monster from the extra deck, which was not correctly summoned, um, you can't actually summon it from the graveyard anymore. So it's, it's well worth in your interest to just basically make one of them the hard way, basically with two rank eight monsters. Sorry, level eight monsters. Next up for a little bit of utility, we are running one light dragon at Ignista, just for our easy monster pop. One Aegean the Sea Castrum for a bit of disruption. And one Sanafan the uh, Sky Prison to just stop special summoning. As well as the big bad boy himself, Ding Gisu, the Orcus of the Evening Star, which nothing needs to be said about Mr. Ding Gisu, so infamous. Next, we are maxing out on this card, which is the Sprint the Iron Dash Dragon. Now, its actual on-field effect is not going to come up because I'm not running out bad, so there's no way to summon it correctly. However, if it is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon either a Fallen of Albaz or a Springen's Monster from your deck in the end phase, which is the main reason we're using this card because you can dump it off brothers, special summon one of your um, Springen's Monsters from your deck and be able to just go off with your plays from there. So I've decided to max out on this, mainly because I do get for at least two of these in a match, uh, potentially even three. So decided to go with the three. And then finally, we are running one Cyframe Lord Omega. Just because if you manage to pull off your um, so, um, Gamma on your own turn, you can go into Omega and just rip cards out of your opponent's hand. So simple as that, ladies and gents. So that is it, ladies and gents. Updated Springen's profile. I'm definitely going to do some more testing with the deck and kind of mess around with a few ratios and see what other cards I can take in because typically with this deck, you don't really need your normal summon. So there's a lot of cards that you could take in and you can get so far in your normal summon and then just go straight into your Springen XYZ play. So definitely a nice deck to mess around with. Nothing overly impactful in terms of meta, but definitely a fun rogue deck to have a mess about with. So we find ourselves at the end of another video as always if you do like this content you know what to do by now hit that like button share subscribe all of that beautiful good stuff and i will definitely definitely see you guys on the next video hope you enjoyed peace